All right, let's get to the latest inflation numbers. They are in, and the Biden administration is excited because inflation was only 3.3% in the latest report. But it's not time to rejoice just yet because inflation is still growing more than wages are, and inflation may not be at 10%, but there's no reason to throw a party for this report either. Let's bring in Brandon Arnold from the National Taxpayers Union. David is also along for the ride. Brandon, good morning. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. All right, so Americans still losing ground to inflation, even though the numbers are down. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're in the clear, does it? Explain all of these numbers. Uh, put some perspective to these numbers for us, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. I think there are a lot of people are uh, rejoicing over these numbers, and it's way too soon to do so. If we look back to June of 2023, so a year ago today, the inflation numbers were 3.2% year-over-year inflation. Now we're at 3.3%. So yes, we've gotten out of that insane period where we had inflation of 7 9% right after the pandemic. But we've pretty much leveled off since June of last year, where we see inflation go up a little, down a little, up a little. The trend line is pretty flat, and Americans are still suffering in this economy, of course, because inflation is cumulative, and overall prices have increased across the board about 20% since three years ago when Joe Biden took office. So we still have a lot of work to do, way too early to celebrate. All right, so just so I understand, because I'm not an economic guru, so you say 20% over the last three years. So is that why people are just continuing to complain about, not complain, I shouldn't say complain, but you know, have justification uh, to ha feel frustration about the prices? Because even though inflation is down s from three years ago, let's say, prices still continue to be a problem. Explain, explain that, because the Biden administration is going to give us a PDF document and say everything is hunky-dory. Yeah, I think people often lose track of what inflation means. So when we're talking about the rate of inflation, 3.3%, that means that's the pace at which prices are increasing. So if you're going 30 miles an hour down the road, you're going in a direction at a certain speed, even if that's not as fast as going 55 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour, you're, you're still going down that road. So prices are still increasing, they're just increasing at a slower rate. Uh, we're still going in that harmful direction here, which is why we look at this at a cumulative basis. Prices have grown exponentially almost since a few years ago. Things are getting more and more expensive. What consumers want is to see deflation. Deflation is when prices fall. They're just increasing at a slower rate than they previously were. And until they get to a rate that's closer to 2%, we're probably not going to get any rate relief in terms of interest rates. So we're still going to be dealing with these incredibly high mortgage rates and interest rates on our credit cards and difficulty in purchasing automobiles and other large items. Hmm. Help us understand the current economy, because uh, unemployment is down. Uh, they're saying that it's at record lows. Spending is still up. People are still going out there, despite those prices still being high. Um, but the reality is most Americans don't feel like their quality of life is better right now. Yeah, for a lot of Americans, the quality of life is not better. I mean, you have to look at things on the individual level. And when prices go up, especially for core items, we just got a little bit of relief when it comes to fuel things like that, energy prices, but prices for things like housing and food have been persistently high. These are core needs that Americans, you can't avoid. You can maybe postpone the purchase of a new television. You can't postpone the purchase of your next meal. And because of that, because wages have not increased, that means salary, the money that we're making, the, the rate that that's increased has not kept up with the rate that prices are going up. People feel like they're left behind. And sure, some people are doing great, and God bless them, that's wonderful news, but a lot of people aren't. And one of the numbers that I think really stands out is the amount of credit card debt that people have taken on mm. during this rough mm. period. We're now at over $1 trillion in aggregate credit card debt in this country. It's the highest it's ever been. People used to finance those big ticket items, that trip to Disney World or that new television with their credit cards, those splurge mm -hmm. items. But now they're financing their day to day purchases just to get by using those credit cards. That debt is increasing and increasing. And with high interest rates, it's really, really hard to pay those off. That's why we're seeing a lot of Americans falling behind in this economy. Hey, Brandon, before we let you go, uh, yesterday on Capitol Hill, President Trump uh, told lawmakers that he wants to get rid of the income tax and replace that with tariffs on imports. Uh, take us through that. Could that work or how do you see it? Yeah, I see this more as campaign rhetoric than a real serious tax plan. The math doesn't really work all that well. You know, we bring in 
about $3.4 trillion in aggregate imports each year. So even if you tax that at 100 percent, you'd still have a very large deficit to deal with. Uh, and on top of that, as people shifted more and more to American-made goods to avoid those tariffs, you get less and less revenue. I'm all about reducing the burden of taxation on American families and businesses. I just don't think this is the way to do it. And on top of that, as prices went up, you'd have more inflationary pressure. Uh, so I think it would hurt a lot of working class Americans who, again, who are struggling, struggling to get by. They may not be paying a lot in taxes because they don't have very large incomes. But this would shift more of the tax burden onto their shoulders and away from wealthier t uh, Americans. So uh, I think, it, again, it might make for a good campaign speech, but I don't think it's a real good economic plan. Brandon, thanks for right. being here. We really appreciate it. Great, great information and, and put so uh, non wonky, which we appreciate. Trust me, we appreciate <laughs> right. it. Our audience appreciates it. All right, coming up you. is yeah, 